This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Peripheral artery disease, um, so most population-based estimates of peripheral artery disease are based on measurement of the ankle brachial index, which is a ratio of the systolic pressure at the ankle compared to the arm. And we all know it's an accurate and non-invasive method to determine PAD. And traditionally, most studies have used a cut point of an ABI less than 0.9 to define PAD. And this is based on sort of historical uh, association of this ABI level to the anatomic findings that we're seeing on catheter angiography. But there's been substantial literature over the past couple of decades uh, that show elevated cardiovascular risks and cardiovascular mortality with an ABI of less than one. And in 2011, the ACCF uh, AHA task force actually updated their guidelines for the management of PAD and now considers an ABI level of 0.9 to 1 to be abnormal. Um, like many other cardiovascular diseases, male gender was traditionally thought to be a risk factor for PAD. However, if you look at the population-based studies that actually show prevalence rates for men and women, the prevalence of PAD is similar or actually greater in women uh, compared to men. And beyond prevalence, there is an increasing population burden of this disease in women. This is the U.S. Census data from 2010, which actually shows that there's a greater number of women uh, compared to men with PAD. Uh, in the United States among those that are greater than 40 years old. And I think that this is uh, pretty surprising because I don't think that this is, you know, recognized widely. This is a table that we compiled uh, looking at those population-based studies that did report separate prevalence rates uh, for men and women. Um, most of them used an ABI of less than 0.9. And as you can see from this table, the prevalence rates of PAD are actually equal, if not slightly greater, in women compared to men. And we also found this to be true in three large NIH-sponsored cohorts, the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, the cardiovascular health study, and the health aging and body composition study. And to me, this is very similar to sort of how we viewed cardi uh, coronary artery disease for a long time, that the risk in women was underestimated. and. Um, you know, male gender was believed to be a significant risk factor for CAD, and I think that's translated uh, into peripheral artery disease despite this, uh, what I think is abundance of data now. We all know what the traditional uh, PAD risk factors are, uh, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, smoking, and hyperlipidemia. Uh, and we do know that these risk factors are actually more prevalent in men compared to women. So what accounts for the equal, if not excess, prevalence of uh, PAD in women? Well, it's plausible that men and women are different in terms of their risk factors and disease presentation for PAD. Uh, for example, smoking is known to be one of the strongest risk factors for PAD development, but in this uh, cohort um, called the ERIC study, which is the Atherosclerosis Risk and Community Study, women who had never smoked were significantly more likely to develop PAD compared to men. In the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, when they looked at participants that were free of four traditional cardiovascular disease risk factors, there was a significant association between female sex and low ABI. And this suggests to me that there are novel risk factors that might contribute more to PAD development and progression in women compared to men. So what could be these uh, novel risk factors? Where I've been interested in inflammation and its role in uh, PAD. Uh, we all know that C-reactive protein is an acute phase protein. It's been shown in the cardiac literature uh, to be a good marker for systemic inflammation and is elevated in those um, at high risk for MI, stroke, and cardiovascular death. There's also literature to support that uh, higher CRP levels uh, are also associated with the risk and progression of peripheral artery disease.
Several population studies also have shown that there are higher levels of CRP in women compared to men, but this is of unclear clinical significance. When you look at data uh, that's combined from the Women's Health Study and the Physician's Health Study, uh, the adjusted relative risk for MI or stroke was much higher in women who were in the highest quartile of CRP compared to men in the similar quartile. And in subgroup observations from the Cardiovascular Health Study, the risks of vascular disease associated with CRP were greater in women than men. And we also showed in a cohort of uh, women and men with advanced peripheral arterial disease who were undergoing lower extremity bypass grafts that the women with high CRP levels were more likely to lose primary graft patency compared to women in the low CRP group. And this was not seen in men. So in order to try to answer this question, we are fortunate enough to uh, have access to data from the Lifeline Screening Program. Most of you know the Lifeline Screening Program. It began in 1993. You probably have patients who have seen you in clinic who have, you know, brought you their printouts of their, you know, uh, ultrasound for their carotid disease or ultrasounds for their um, aortic aneurysm screening. But so they do provide multiple screening services, including measurement of ABI um, uh, for evaluation of PAD. And they measured a significant, um, in an, a significant number of these uh, participants, they actually measured CRP level. And it's a unique data set because they're actually overrepresented in terms of women who present for screening. About double the number of women than men um, actually undergo screening. So using this uh, data set, we wanted to actually determine the prevalence of abnormal ABI levels in this screening population of women and men and see if we could determine some gender-specific associations of different cardiovascular risk factors as well as CRP with abnormal ABI levels. And we were hoping that this would help to address some of the knowledge gaps uh, concerning risk factors for women with PAD, especially since women tend to be underrepresented in contemporary PAD revascularization studies. So uh, between April of 2005 and August of 2011, there were over 205,000 participants, um, double the number of women compared to men, who underwent measurement of ABI and CRP. We also chose this subset because they had uh, complete information on age, race, hypercholesterolemia, hypertension, and smoking. They had filled out these detailed questionnaires. We excluded those with any prior lower extremity revascularization. Again, the risk factors were based on self-report or use of medications to treat the underlying condition that they were reporting. The ABI was measured in both legs, in both the dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial arteries, and we used the lower of the two values. Sorry for the busy slide here, but this is the demographic characteristics of our cohort by gender. You could see that the mean ABI was lower in women compared to men, and that the women were slightly older uh, compared to men. The men were more likely to have hypercholesterolemia, diabetes, uh, be current smokers, and have had a history of uh, cardiovascular disease. Women had higher median CRP levels uh, in this cohort. And if you look at ABI categories by gender, this basically is very consistent with all of the other population-based uh, uh, studies that I showed earlier, that women had a uh, higher prevalence of ABI less than 0 0.9 uh, and 0 0.9 to 1.0. When we looked at the association of traditional uh, risk factors as well as CRP with ABI, this actually should come as no surprise. We found that there was a statistically significant uh, association between increased age, black race, smoking, CRP, uh, coronary artery disease, um, as well as diabetes and uh, hypertension with low ABI. We then wanted to try to figure out whether or not um, these risk factors were more important, relatively speaking, for men compared to women. And so we looked at whether there were any significant interactions between gender and ABI with these risk factors. And the ones that were statistically significant were age, CRP, coronary disease, and diabetes, but as you can see, uh, it was the strongest for age and CRP. And what we found was actually the opposite of what we were hoping to find, was that an increase in age, an increase in CRP, was more strongly associated with an abnormal ABI in men compared to women. So that was not what we expected to find. We, also, we actually thought that some other risk marker, other than traditional risk factors, would be responsible for this excess prevalence or higher association um, with a low ABI, but we found that to actually be the opposite of what 
what we expected. So again, all of these risk factors uh, were more likely to be associated with the low ABI in men compared uh, to women, and the strongest ones were age and CRP. So what did we conclude from these data? Well, women participating in the lifeline screening did indeed have a higher prevalence of low ABI compared to men. They also had a lower prevalence of traditional cardiovascular uh, risk factors compared to men and that these higher median CRP levels that we uh, saw in these women did not explain the excess prevalence of this low ABI. And our results were actually similar to these other cohort studies that I uh, had mentioned earlier. Um, some limitations from this uh, population, uh, it's a voluntary screening population. These are all cross-sectional associations. The majority of the participants were white and there were a low number of diabetics. And again, these patients filled out questionnaires. We relied on self-report, so certainly there could be any number of residual confounders. So the next question that you might ask, well, you know, maybe ABI levels are just different in women and men. Maybe women have lower normal ABI levels. Um, they probably do. Uh, in the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, this was specifically uh, examined, and women had about a 0 .02 lower normal ABI level compared to men, and blacks had about a 0 .02 lower normal ABI level compared to, to whites. But s many studies have shown that there's a sex-independent cut point of an ABI less than one that's actually significantly uh, associated with adverse cardiovascular events in, in both sexes. So this would really argue against the idea that a higher prevalence of a low ABI just simply reflects a low normal ABI in women. And if you look at just some of the data, this is just uh, data that we put together from the Health, Aging, and uh, Body Composition st uh, Study. You can see that even a mildly abnormal ABI between 0.9 and 1.0 is really significantly uh, associated with elevated risk of coronary artery disease death uh, and stroke. And these risks are, you know, if not slightly higher, just as high in women compared to men. So I, I think that really uh, goes against that argument. So in conclusion, um, I think that although under-recognized, under-diagnosed, and possibly under-treated, I think women have similar, if not greater, prevalence of peripheral arterial disease compared to men. Uh, conventional cardiovascular disease risk factors uh, uh, do not appear to be as strongly associated with PAD in women as they are in men. Um, unfortunately, we didn't find the answer to this uh, question in the lifeline screening cohort, um, but I think the uh, answer to this question is still out there, and I'll take any suggestions if you all have um, uh, anything to contribute to this field, because I think that uh, they're still out, out there to, uh, to discover and learn about. Thanks very much.